Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to Opening Basics number 39, The London System. Um, I thought I would look at The London System using the games of uh, Geta Kamsky as a guide. So let me give a little uh, capsule biography of Geta Kamsky, who's a, really a very interesting player. Uh, he was born in Siberia in 1974 and he became a strong player uh, in Russia. He was an uh, under-20 Soviet champion and uh, he won a game against Mark Taimanov when he was 12 uh, so, uh, young, strong from a young age. He came to the U.S. in 1989, so he's around 15 years old, uh, won the U.S. championship in 1991. And uh, from the years 1993 to 1996, he was a uh, candidate for the uh, world championship. And he played in a couple different cycles. There were actually two independent <laughs> championships, chess championships in the world at that time. Uh, FIDE had a championship, as they do today. And then there was the Players Chess Association World Championship, which had been set up by uh, Gary Kasparov in competition to FIDE. Uh, he, he participated in both of them. He won candidates' matches against uh, Anand. He also defeated Kramnik and Nigel Short in matches. Ultimately, he made it uh, to the top of the FIDE system and uh, faced a uh, world championship match against Anatoly Karpov, uh, but ultimately he lost that. And then after that, he actually retired from chess for about eight years. He went to school, got a law degree, and then um, didn't start playing chess again until 2004. But, uh, well, after starting up again in 2004, he won uh, four more U.S. championships for a total of uh, five. So he's a five-time U.S. champion and uh, still active today. The first game I wanted to show you was uh, played. Uh, it was a team championship game between New York and San Francisco. Gata Kemsky was on the New York team with the white pieces, and his opponent, uh, Vinay Bott, was on the San Francisco team with the black pieces. This was played in 2014. So Kamsky, throughout his career, has played the London system. So I'll show you some games of his uh, early on, as well as this uh, recent game, uh, showing kind of the latest latest uh, theoretical developments. So anyway, d4, d5. This is uh, the way you get into the London system, knight f3 and knight f6. And black is playing all the main moves here. Um, once again, well, let's go on a few moves. Bishop f4, this is kind of the key move of the London system getting those, the piece outside the pawn chain. Um, Black uh, tries to undermine the center right away, put some pressure on it since, uh, since white isn't putting any pressure on black center. Black <laughs> can put some pressure on white center and white just defends. So this is the idea. Get the knight and the bishop developed quickly and just uh, defend the center very solidly. So knight to c6, normal development, c3. So completing this pawn triangle. So when he, whenever you see this, regardless of how the remaining pieces are developed. Uh, I, I would consider this to be the London system. And uh, there, there are many different move orders that you can get to this. And you can also play the system against um, black setups that don't involve d5. So it can be played against uh, someone who's trying to go for a Nemzo Indian setup or, or other things. We'll see, we'll see an example of that as well. Um, so right now, let's. I want to continue with the main line, which is also um, the way that I've been playing it as black. So I think it's uh, fine for black as well. So um, the main line would continue here with e6. Uh, Vinay plays something else. He plays the second choice move at this point, which is also very interesting. But uh, well, let's just show the main line and kind of complete the setup here. So knight bd2, uh, bishop to d6 is often a good idea with black to try and oppose this bishop. Um, to prevent it from, I mean, it's kind of awkward that it's controlling these squares inside Black's camp, so it's natural to oppose it. The bishop drops back to g3, uh, but Black does not take right away. If you take right away, uh, it opens up the h-file, uh, and this rook can become very active, and White has not committed to castling. This is kind of one of the ideas of this setup is that with a solid center, um, White is in no hurry to castle, uh, may castle queenside or kingside, and may uh, not even castle at all in some cases. So uh, um, so you can't uh, rely on just uh, taking a piece over here and messing up the kingside pawns. You can't rely on uh, on white castling kingside into those messed up pawns. Okay, but black castles here. And uh, bishop to d3, white keeps developing. b6, um, allowing black to finish development. Knight to e5, and bishop to b7. 
And this is a very uh, standard position in the London system. And, and this is the setup I usually go for is black. I think it's uh, uh, a fine way to play. Uh, but white still has ideas. The thing is that white is not trying to kill you with the London system, is not trying to kill you in the opening, but is going for um, long-term pressure. And uh, there's still ideas here to create an increased pressure. For example, now maybe castling and pushing the F-pawn forward in some, uh, in some fashion will start to create some weaknesses on the king side. And all these pieces are poised to uh, jump into any kind of king side attack. So um, white's in a position to just continue building up pressure from here, and black is going to have to defend. And that's uh, one of the difficult things about playing against the London system is that um, because white has such a solid setup, it's a difficult for um, it's difficult for black to get counterplay. And um, at, at the moment, you'll notice that you can't take the knight, or if you do, you need to take with the bishop because this pawn will come back and fork those two pieces. Um, you know, you can increase the pressure on the knight by playing queen to c7, but, uh, well, white can play with f4. So those are just some of the ideas in the position. Let's go back to c3 right here. So that line started or continued from this point with e6. Now, Vinay Bot played the second choice move in the database here, played queen to b6. Very interesting and I think kind of principled way for black to play. I haven't tried this myself, but it seems pretty logical. Um, you know, white has diverted the queen side, deserted, <laughs> deserted the queen side by moving the bishop outside the pawn chain. So why not uh, probe some of these weaknesses here? So queen b3 is a um, logical response, defending and opposing the queen there. And uh, this is kind of a funny situation where uh, neither side wants to trade. Both sides are offering a trade, but neither side wants to trade because uh, whoever takes... Um, say if black takes uh, white's queen, then white will take back with a pawn. That'll open up the uh, a-file for the rook and vice versa. So so neither side really wants to take, but they're uh, willing to let the queens uh, stare at each other for a while. So c4 is the main move for black here. And then uh, Kamsky is not interested in the trade, although I have to say the chess engine uh, prefers taking at this point, but just drops his queen back. He's still going for a long game here. Um, and now uh, black has this funny move, bishop to f5. <laughs> so I always, I always like these cute little tricks on the opening. You can't take that, even though it's not defended because, um, because the pawn on b2 is hanging. And uh, more than the pawn, the, uh, the rook in the corner can't be defended. Let's see, it might go like this. And uh, black has won a pawn and the exchange, and, uh, and white's uh, king is is in trouble and if he retreats the queen to block the check then uh, then black can just trade queens and be up material and on the way to winning so so anyway a funny funny move and also a way for black to activate his bishop get his bishop outside the pawn chain so i think black is playing this part of the game really well queen drops back to c1 um now um <clears throat> let's see h6 was played um h6 Right, it was black's move there. Um, so bishop e2. I think I'm just going to go forward some moves here to the next interesting part. We'll just Both sides will complete uh, deployment of their pieces. They're all going to kind of logical squares. There really aren't, aren't that many squares available. So, so the pieces are just taking up the squares that they have. And then here, this is where um, at this point, uh, Vinay starts to go after the bishop. And this is also a very common, common idea in the London system, um, you want to, if you can as black, trade this bishop off uh, for a knight and get the, the bishop pair advantage. And um, and Kamsky allows this with bishop to g3. So uh, I just want to point out one other tactic here. It's actually safe for uh, white to play bishop to e5. You might think that bishop is just going to get kicked around with a move like f6. But then there's uh, knight h4. And the point is <clears throat> that this knight is hanging over here. It's a loose piece going after the bishop. So, so there are uh, so it is actually possible in this position to play bishop e5 first. But camp c just goes bishop g3 allows the exchange and doesn't mind the messed up pawns, even though um, there's no rook on the open h file at this point. Um, so black is is not afraid of castling. Kamsky brings his rook out, so we'll just go forward a few moves, just uh, kind of some 
poking and prodding, Black starts to expand on the uh, queen side and Kamsky stops it. And then he pushes on with uh, e4 here, opens things up a bit. So we get that exchange on e4. The bishop drops back to f8 to defend the king side. And a little more maneuvering with the pieces, some prodding on the queen side, trying to resolve that situation there a little bit. Um, the knight tops into e5. And then uh, here, Vinay Bot takes. Um, the chess engine thinks that's a slight mistake. So the, the um, best way for um, black to play according to the engine is to take here, take on c2, queen takes, and then not take on um, c3, but bring the knight in and just uh, keep this pressure over here. And this is about an even position. So somehow this, this trade here that um, Vinay goes for, uh, even though it looks pretty innocuous to me, um, and he also trades bishops, so we get a similar kind of uh, setup just with that trade of two pieces, but somehow white has a little bit of pressure in this position. Uh, maybe because you know this, this knight hasn't yet got into the game and it's blocking the bishop, so white's pieces are definitely more active here. Um, let's see, so knight d5 now is played though, and rick a to b1. I guess uh, Kamsky is soonest to the b-file. Uh, knight to b6, blocking that, and um, defending defending this pawn over here, which was uh, under some pressure from the knights. Um, queen to e4, and we see that uh, slowly white has built up some pressure, and so this is the kind of thing that white is going for in the London system. Is that white is not trying to uh, kill uh, kill his opponent right out of the opening, but uh, get a solid position and just uh, build up that pressure and just, just poke and prod and try different things. And uh, right now there's actually a, uh, a tactic in the position which uh, Vinay Bot did not notice, and he just played uh, bishop to d6. So um, that's a losing move. Um, and uh, well, we'll come back and show how, uh, how it could have been saved Although white still has pressure, so uh, you know there would there would still be future tricks. Um, but anyway, if you want to see if you can spot a tactic here for white, see if you can find the move. Okay, pause the video if you want some time to think about it. I'm gonna give the answer away. So the tactic is knight takes f7, and uh, well, it grabs a pawn, it forks those two pieces. So uh, really, there's nothing better than to uh, to take the knight. But, uh, well, that runs into queen takes e6 check. So you've got a couple of pawns for the piece. The king drops back. And now the uh, hammer blow. Rook takes b6. And Vinay Bot resigned here. Uh, I assume he spent some time thinking about it. But this position cannot be saved. Um, so what happens if you take? Queen takes. We've got rook to e3. And that's the idea. Rook to f3 is mate <laughs> and uh well there there is a way to stop it so it can uh, continue the game can continue from here but uh white wins in all lines the best try well first of all notice that blocking with a rook isn't going to help like say rook to rook to a7 you just deliver the check and the rook comes over to block and the queen mates so it uh, takes the rook and mate so there's no there's no defense that way the only defense is queen to b7 and after rook takes f3, rook to f3 check, uh, taking the rook, giving up the queen. And um, knight takes. Sorry. And in this position, you might say, oh, well, you've got two rooks for the queen and the bishop for the knight. You're just down a few pawns. Why not play on? But, uh, well, it's not just that you're uh, down a little bit of material, but um, because the queen and two, two pawns are worth more than the two rooks. Uh, so it's not just that you're slightly down in material, but in fact your uh, your king position is still uh, in in horrible shape. So so for example, rook a7, knight to h4 threatens knight to uh, knight to g3 mate, <laughs> knight to g6 mate. The king has no moves, so all you have to do is deliver a check. Uh, the bishop can't control that square. Let's see, uh, the rook can come over, provide the king a shield for a second. Knight to g6 check. King runs in the corner, and then the Nice move, knight to h8, threatening. Queen takes rook, so king takes. Queen takes, and um, that's clearly resignable. The queen is stronger than a rook and a bishop. 
and uh, and white still has extra pawns <laughs> so anyway at this point rook takes b6 uh, Vinay resigned okay uh, let's take a look at the next game here this next game was played in um, in the United States in 1989 so uh, this was when Gadakamsky was freshly arrived in the U.S. and his opponent here with the black pieces was another uh, young U.S. talent, young at the time, Maxim uh, Dlugi. So we have two two young lions here facing off against each other. Kamsky starts off d4, Maxim goes d5, knight f3, and then um, Dlugi tries the immediate c5 rather than, well, in the previous game we saw knight to f6. And uh, Kamsky just... Um, play c3. He doesn't want to defend the center with e3. He wants to keep this uh, diagonal open for his bishop. And then um, and Delugi continues with e6. So we get that e6 move in this game. Um, and in this position, if you um, look at the arrangement of the white pieces, you can see that, that this, um, this looks a lot like the Slav defense. And in fact, uh, Kamsky does play the Slav defense with uh, black. So um, this is a kind of pawn structure that he's uh, very familiar with. Anyway, after e6, he can get the bishop outside the pawn chain, knight to c6, and e3. So we have that uh, London system set up. Bishop d6 now immediately opposing the bishop. The bishop drops back to g3. And uh, Maxim Delugi, at this point, he exchanges. He takes that bishop off and allows the opening of the h-file. So this uh, game will illustrate... Um, the kind of the safety of White's king in the center here, and uh, well, the dangers of opening up opening up this h file. Although it does not turn into an immediate attack, there's just uh, some continuing development here. So, queen to d6, knight bd2, knight to f6, bishop to b5. So the bishop comes out here and puts some pressure on the knight. And um, you know, after this initial exchange of um, dark squared bishops. Both sides just have the light squared bishops. So I think it's very instructive to um, to consider the peace trades that Kamsky initiates in in these positions. So uh, he's got really an excellent uh, positional sense. He knows uh, which minor pieces are going to work well in which structures. And um, so watch this in action. Bishop to d7 was played uh, to defend the knight and um, avoid any uh, pawn structure damage. And Kamsky trades his bishop for the knight, not a trade that uh, um, a lot of players would want, to, uh, would want to do on their own. But, well, remember, first of all, that one pair of bishops has been traded, so you're not uh, giving up the bishop pair advantage. So there's no uh, uh, material uh, advantage or disadvantage to that trade. It should just be made on the basis of uh, which piece is going to be better in this structure. And this light squared bishop is uh, going to be stuck behind these light squared pawns. Or not stuck behind them the whole game, but its, it's uh, action will be somewhat inhibited by the light squared pawn center. Whereas these knights will be free to hop around. And the position is fairly closed still. Um, let's see. Uh, it's, it's White's turn. Yeah, White's knight hops into e5. And uh, Black Castles at this point decides it's safe. Um, g4 is played here. So uh, just uh, taking advantage. Uh, white, notice white is not castling at all. The king is staying in the center. And uh, that double g pawn, let's see if we can put it to sub use. Maybe chase this knight away from defensive h7, get the queen on this diagonal, and uh, mate. That would be a nice plan. Um, so the knight drops back to d7, probably with the idea of exchanging off this uh, strong knight here on e5. That would be useful. But... Uh, he can't take it right away because after queen c2, he's got to deal with the uh, threat on h7. So he plays f5, and now um, and now uh, Kamsky exchanges. And notice he doesn't take the bishop; he takes the knight. So um, bishop takes d7. That's the take back, and he plays knight to f3, bringing his knight into the game. So the only minor pieces left are the uh, the bishop and the knight and this is an excellent piece because it's going to the e5 square where that bishop can never take it the e5 square is a dark square it's supported by a pawn the other pawns have passed by so it'll be uh, a permanent residence of that e 
permanent resident of that e5 square. There's no getting rid of it. Whereas in the meantime, this bishop is stuck behind the pawn chain. Um, and this pawn on g4 here, it might look like it's hanging, but in fact it's uh, pinned. So notice that, that that pawn can't move. So um, it's it's uh, careful. This this uh, tension on between the g pawn and the f pawn is, is carefully maintained for a while. Let's see, um, black plays c takes d4, trying to get some open lines for his pieces. e takes d4. Uh, queen to f4, the queen comes in to cause trouble. And knight to e5. And so once again, the, uh, the queen can't take the pawn because the knight's defending it. And the pawn can't take the pawn because uh, the check, the queen check on h7 is actually mate. The knight is guarding, guarding the escape square here. So there's still a mate threat on that diagonal. And uh, let's see, I'm going to stop at this point. I think, uh, well, Delugi plays bishop to b5. And uh, I'll give a pointer. You can, you can watch the rest of the game. But uh, if you want to look at how it ended, I'll give a pointer to the game in the video uh, in the description to this video. But I have to say that uh, that this is really just winning already. It's kind of a positional victory, and it's uh, an instructive uh, example of how to win a positionally won uh, game, I guess, uh, to follow the rest of it. But uh, it would it would make this video too long. So let's uh, let's go on to the next game here. So this uh, next game was played uh, in the U.S. Championship in 2012. Gadakamsky with the white pieces against. Alexander Onoshuk. Um, so uh, Kamsky starts off with d4, and Onoshuk is not going with uh, d5. He has a different setup in mind. And um, this is a long game, but we're going to go through it all the way. It has an interesting finish, and um, and then that'll that'll end. That'll that'll take care of it. This is the last last game I'm going to cover in this video. So knight f6, uh, bishop to f4. So preparing to get the normal London system set up. Onoshuk goes with e6, e3, c5. So e3 was played in advance of c5, but uh, maybe he knew it was coming. Or uh, There's no harm in playing e3 once you've got the bishop outside the pawn chain. So maybe just going for this setup simply. So b6, an interesting way to play against it. And um, uh, the uh, there's a number of different setups that black can try against the London system. I wanted to mention that um, uh, Chess Explained did a series of videos about how to fight against the London system. I'll also include a just pointer to that in the description of this video. So if you want to check out ideas for black against the London system. But uh, uh, anyway, uh, I'm going to continue with this game. Let's see, knight f3. So we've got we've got the London system set up. We've got all three all three of these pawns in the center and these two pieces developed in their characteristic spots. And uh, black setup is is uh, different than what we saw in the previous games, and continues to be different with bishop to b7. Um, so h3 is played. h3 is often a useful idea in the London system. It um, allows the bishop to drop back to um, h2, and and um, in that way, um, in that way, uh, white can preserve that bishop against uh, the knight h5 idea. Uh, let's see. By the way. Knight h5 immediately doesn't seem to be uh, good here. The chess engine likes this line. Bishop to g5, kicking the queen. Bishop e7, exchanging. And uh, just seems like uh, white has uh, slightly better development than black and um, has gotten rid of uh, uh, black's better bishop. The dark squared bishop is black's better piece there, whereas uh, white still has a fine light squared bishop. So that would be... Uh, fine for white as well. Anyway, so bishop b7, That's that wasn't Anushuk's idea anyway, but just wanted to explain h3 is happening in time to provide this uh, drop back for the bishop. Um, bishop to e7 was played now. Uh, knight bd2, defending the knight. c takes d4. Well, you know, the knight really didn't need defense, but uh, okay, so c takes d4 is, is trying to soften up that, that uh, strong center and then castling. Um, a3 is played. So a very slow setup from white. He's not in any hurry. Um, d6 from black and bishop to e2. So this is different from what we saw previously from Kapsky. Uh, in other games he was putting the bishop on d3. One difference is that there is this pressure along this uh, diagonal. So maybe it's useful to have the bishop here defending that knight 
and that means that the queen and the other knight are free to uh, roam about the board and try try different things. And then this setup is a pretty solid defense against uh, this bishop, uh, so it's safe to castle here. Uh, let's see, knight bd7 was played, and uh, white does castle. So rook to c8, and bishop to h2. So the bishop takes advantage of this little spot back here and drops drops all the way back. So um, let's see, this is a long game, so let's go forward a bit. Knight to e4, Kamsky just trades it off. And uh, black's position is slightly cramped, so he's happy for that trade. It's fairly even. But now um, this bishop suddenly becomes active. <laughs> it, uh, this, uh, because of the trade, this uh, bishop has deserted the b7 post and allows this bishop to come out to a6 um, and uh, nudge that rook off off its uh, square. The rook goes up to c7. Queen's still defending the knight, so this, this knight is still quite stable here. Uh, let's see, knight to uh, d2 was played at this point, though, kicking kicking that bishop back. The bishop goes to c6. So you see uh, black's pieces have been forced into a seemingly awkward configuration. Anyway, queen e2. Yeah, let's go forward some more moves. Queen a8. Um, typical idea in these cramped setups, kind of like a, uh, <clears throat> a bit like a, um, a a hedgehog setup, getting this uh, battery going along this diagonal. So e4. So we see the knight here on d2 and the queen on e2 are combining to defend the uh, the e pawn, so he can push that forward and shut down that diagonal. Uh, the bishop drops back to b7 now, and uh, Kamsky decides to keep that bishop, drops it back to d3, e5. Um, just putting a little more pressure on the center. The knight goes to c4. Um, b5 was played, kicking the knight. The knight goes to a5. So I think he's going to uh, get rid of this bishop over here. But there's an exchange first, uh, taking the pawn, and uh, bishop takes this pawn. So exchange of the uh, d pawn for the b pawn. And uh, this knight hops into e5. Uh, Onishuk has got a good square for his knight here in exchange for some uh, messy pawns. And now this uh, knight does go ahead and grab the bishop. So um, queen takes, hitting hitting the bishop. Oh, the bishop is defended. So rook a to c1. And there's an exchange of rooks. And so we have this uh, simplified position here where white has the bishop pair and uh, black has a slightly damaged pawn structure, but a, a solid uh, piece on this knight on e5. Mm. Yeah, there may be ideas to kick that knight away with the f-pawn push, but that also might open up some diagonal against the king. So we'll just watch and see how this game unfolds. Uh, rick to c8, rick to d1. Kamsky wants to keep the remaining pieces on. He likes this queen, rook, and two bishops, I guess. Queen to b6, setting the queen up on this diagonal. Um, a4, defending the bishop, and um, so the queen is free to move now. Let's see, bishop to g3, so a little bit of maneuvering here. King gets off the back rank. Ah, sorry, <laughs> misclick there, let's see. I wanted to mention right here, king to h2, it was a bit of a mysterious move to um, to me, but what he was really doing, it wasn't just getting off the back rank, but he was preparing this f4 move. Now he can play it without worrying about uh, a backfire along this diagonal. The, uh, there was a threat of pawn push with check and winning the queen there. So, <laughs> yeah, you do have to be careful about things like that. I don't know if that wins the queen. I guess the queen could block. But anyway, get get the king out of out of any potential trouble before playing f4. So um, bishop goes to f6. Now pawn to f4. And now we see that um, white's position is really looking pretty good because he's kicked, kicked this knight away from its uh, excellent square, and um, he still has the bishop pair advantage, and um, the more active pieces, he's got uh, he's got these pawn weaknesses to play against. The knight drops back to g6, bishop to d3, stops those pawns from coming forward, and maybe with some ideas on the king side. Uh, let's see, h5, b4, kicking the queen. Yeah, so this was, this was an interesting moment here. b4 is not a move I would have thought of. It's actually a pawn sack. And, um, but it was pr prompted by this uh, h5 move. So h5 maybe was a slight mistake. I mean, at the moment it's defended by the queen. And after b4, the queen takes a pawn and now queen grabs on h5. So it's activated 
uh, white's queen at the cost of a pawn. So now black has long-term prospects for the endgame with this uh, outside pass pawn. Plus he's just uh, one pawn up. So is there enough uh, activity here to justify the sacrifice? Well, uh, white continues with e5, playing vigorously at this point, um, trying to prove an advantage. So we get this exchange, d takes, pawn takes. So it's dissolved one of those pawn weaknesses, leaving, leaving black with two passed pawns. But all these pieces are well placed to um, uh, try and uh, get something going against the king here. Now the, um, the pawn can't be taken. It's defended twice and attacked twice. Uh, Ownership plays rook c5, a nice move to bring another attacker against the pawn and also pin it at the same time against the queen. Rook e1 to defend the pawn. Now uh, the knight drops back to f8. Maybe he's preparing um, g6 to kick the queen away. Um, so the queen drops back to g4, and now the bishop has to move because the pawn is really threatening to take it. Bishop to e7, and then the rook goes to b1. So the queen comes back to d7, hurrying back to defend the king. Um, the rook is, is looking to come into the back rank, or the second rank, depending on uh, you know how black had played at that point. So he's covered the second rank, but the rook to b8 is still a possibility in this position. Um, but uh, let's see, Kamsky goes bishop f5 first, hitting the queen. And now maybe knight to e6 is the best move, although a pretty counterintuitive knight to e6 would allow rook to b8 with check. And yeah, maybe, maybe you can block with the queen or the rook. Uh, anyway, that was the chess engine suggestion. Uh, queen to d5 was played here. Centralizing the queen seems pretty normal. Rook to b8, though. And now there's this pin on the knight. And, uh, well, you know, storm clouds are gathering, I guess, is what you can say about this position. Um, so g6, trying to kick that bishop back. Um, so this, this next part is really nicely nicely played. Good, good example of uh, tactics. Um, you don't really want to move this bishop. Um, but the sacrifice does not yet uh, work. So there's a the move, rook e8. And... Um, the bishop, of course, is not really under attack anyway because of the pin. Um, and also there's a counterattack on black's bishop while, while bringing the rook into a better position here. So let's see, rook drops back to c7 to defend the bishop. And now the sacrifice, bishop takes g6. And um, he can't take with the knight because of the pin, so he takes with the pawn. And the queen comes in, queen g6, check. The king uh, runs to h8. And uh, a very nice move here, e6, just uh, <laughs> moving that pawn forward. And, um, well, the, you know, it's providing a perch for the queen. It's blocking blocking the queen's defense of f7, so the queen can come into f7, perhaps. Maybe it's just taking squares away from the king and uh, threatening, threatening different mating ideas. Anyway, uh, rook to b7 was played here. And um, now queen to f7. So the queen occupies that good square. And the rook drops down to b2, trying to uh, threaten, well, not trying to, threatening, threatening checkmate there immediately. But uh, things are happening too quick over on the king side at this point. Um, there's this check, uh, giving up the rook for the bishop and, uh, and the knight, bishop and knight. Check. And um, so he's gotten some of his material back. It's now queen and rook versus queen and bishop versus queen and rook. But uh, well, it's this uh, this London bishop is now the hero of the game. <laughs> That's kind of why I wanted to show this. So there's just a couple of checks here: king h7, queen f7 check. Uh, the king goes back to h8. Now queen e8 check. And uh, and black resigned at this point. This could be a, another interesting chess puzzle for you if you want to. Um, ask yourself what's the uh, what's the fastest way for white to finish off black in this position, or another way to ask ask the same question is why did why did black resign here? Okay, I am going to um, give the answer away now. Yeah, there's only well, there's two moves. The, the king could come up to uh, you know h7 or g7, but the response is the same in all cases. The queen comes here with check. And that forces a trade of queens. 
and now we see the the uh, the bishop becoming the hero of the game. The bishop is blocking the b8 square, so the rook can't come back to stop that pawn from queening, and uh, and this pawn is in the way, so the rook can't come here to attack the pawn from behind. So there's no way that that uh, that, that pawn won't become a queen. So anyway, after uh, after queen e8 check, Onishuk resigned. So pretty nice game there. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. And um, as for my videos, you know, I was going to try and do a black repertoire right after this, but I realized I needed to cover a couple more systems from white. Uh, so I'm going to look at systems where white plays knight c3 instead of pawn to c3. These are things like the uh, the Blackmar Demer Gambit and the uh, Richter Verisov attack. And after I finish that up, then I'll be able to talk about a, uh, a black repertoire against these uh, minor queen's pawn openings. Um, so stay tuned for that, and I will uh, see you soon.